goes well. The 500 Festival is looking for volunteers in May. News 8's Sanjali Cockaday joins us live downtown with details on how to get involved already. Oh, what's next to you there, Anjali? <laughs> Hey, good morning. Well, today is all about getting people excited and signing up. I'm with the banana here. <laughs> how are you? Hello, how are you? I'm banana. I always get your day off to a good start. I'm also with Jen Pittman with One America. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Good. All right, to so talk about everything that's happening today, how are you guys getting people excited? Okay, that was Miles the Banana, the One America 500 Festival Mini Marathon mascot. And I am Tom Spaulding, alter ego. I'm also on the public relations team at One America. One America is a financial services company that got our start in 1877. I'm happy to share my career journey with you guys. It involves communications and storytelling for about 30 years. That's gone from being a newspaper reporter to public relations. This video is an exciting project for me personally because I believe that a lot of my entrepreneurial spirit came from being part of the Junior Achievement Program myself when I was a kid, when I was your age. Um, I learned from JA classes and uh, curriculum that I wasn't great at business, but I did have an entrepreneurial spirit when it came to writing so that I learned in many ways, what I'm at today is the blend of that spirit. You know, when you're in communications and PR, you are telling stories with different mediums, writing, video, uh, speaking, and things that uh, did not come naturally to me, but I learned as I went along in my career. Um, one of the key things is, what's your goal as a communicator or a storyteller? For us, it's branding. A lot of times it's our, getting our name out there, whether it's, you know, bananas or uh, a screen cloth. Always using the power of words and the power of visuals to communicate a message. That's the goal. So people ask me all the time how to get started in journalism, how to get started into public relations, right? Well, it all began when I was a kid at my parents' kitchen table. Here was the first inspiration right here, comic books. And uh, I used to sit at the table with my brother and we would reenact our own version of Marvel, Spider-Man and Hulk, uh, X-Men, Indiana Jones. And what I liked best about these things that's carried me throughout my career was how they married words and pictures, right? Your quotes and, and photos. I knew from my enjoyment of comic books that writing was going to be in my future. So when I got to high school and I was old enough to join the student newspaper and write stories, I was able to do that. And it started off with what I was most interested in, that was sports. Sports was kind of a fun way to get to the front of the line, see things up close, press box, locker rooms access to athletes and heroes. Got to college at the University of Kentucky, joined the student newspaper. Um, again, started writing about sports. Uh, sports morphed into news because I thought, ah, oh, why limit yourself to just the fun and games? You know, there's important issues to write about. And uh, I honed my skills, uh, summer internships. There's one I had in Cleveland. Eventually graduated from UK, uh, looked for a job, uh, went into newspapers. First in Sarasota, I had an internship there, covered some really wild, fun stories, circuses, lost dogs, got to Indianapolis, covered things like 9-11. Even though I left the journalism business, I felt like the skills that I learned from that profession could carry over into public relations, and I was right. As a journalist, your job was to go to a different assignment every day, 
meet new people and put those words together into a story that people could understand. Well, the same approach is true in my job in PR. I have to learn something new each week, if not daily. The parts about technology that have come along with it is that it's just easier now to do my job. I can use a cell phone and a smart camera, but back in the day of journalism, I had to go to a payphone and dictate a story to an editor. Over the phone, yes. And I think what's neat about technology and about talent is that you mix them two together and boy, you can produce a lot of solid content. So I told you before, I have a college degree in journalism, which helped me get in the front door at newspapers. As it turns out, that background is really important to what I do because as a reporter, your job is to catch the chase. And in PR, your job is to produce effective, efficient, and metrics justifiable communications. In other words, you have to be organized and planned, have a great story to tell that's very clear, and get that out to the press and the market, or get that out to social media or on a signboard. Wherever you are displaying that communication has to be successful and you have to measure it. And that way, if you aren't successful, which happens, you can learn from that and go on and be successful in the next campaign. There are a few techniques that I've taught young journalists and communicators that are absolutely essential, but also helpful and useful. And that is, if you're assigned to cover an event or write a story, first of all, do your research. Number two, get to the event 10 minutes early or, or longer if you can. Number three, sit in the front row or as close to the front as you can, even if you have to kneel down in the aisle. That's better for pictures, better for your own listening skills, right? Number four, when you finish, get the name of the presenter or whoever it was you talked to and make sure their name is spelled correctly. That goes a long way. I have a couple of sayings that I relate a lot to that are not mine. One, of course, you've heard is, Proper preparation prevents poor performance. Well, the other one is there ain't no free lunch. And both of those sayings um, apply to the work world. When you're applying for a job, you want to make sure you understand fully what you're doing when you walk in there and that you have a pristine work ethic, focused work ethic. And that's every day. So I'm never really happy at work in the sense that I'm never satisfied, right? Every day you're earning your lunch, you're earning your keep, so to speak. As a writer, I've been doing this pen to paper and you know, finger to, to typewriter and then uh, palm to laptop for now over 30 years. And I feel like I'm gonna be writing probably for the next 30 years, frankly. I'm meant for this, I'm meant to be a storyteller. You don't have to be as introverted or extroverted as I, tend to be with the banana costume, et cetera, et cetera. You just do what it takes, right? And so that day one that you're in that job and you're prepared and ready to go, never lose that intensity or that fire. Always keep that in the back of your mind. That's how you will get successful and stay successful in my book. In closing, just wanted to say my old buddy, Jason has this saying, comfortable being uncomfortable. Don't be afraid of trying new things, right? And you're never too young to start that thinking, right? Yep, Miles 2.0.